Welcome to Drive Time, the UCLA Anderson podcast. My name is Dylan Stafford. I am your host. I'm an assistant dean here with the program. Today, I am with Derek Cox. Sir. Oh, here we are. (laughs) Good to be here. Thank you for having me, man. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm sorry. I'm all a little caffeinated, amped up. We're recording this in the morning. So that's that's bad because I'm an energy high morning person. Plus, I think Derek is a real wonderful human being. So I am really excited. I got to know Derek a couple months ago when we did a special edition drive time with uh, Jermaine and Jairo. And their stories are also incredible. So that was three incredible stories trying to squeeze into one. Today is the deep dive. Um, We're coming up. We're a month in front of graduation, maybe less. And um, Derek has been nominated by his peers. We surveyed the graduating class and we said, hey, you know, I wish we could talk to everybody. We can't. So um, whose stories uh, does the world need to hear? I don't know about the world, but people who love UCLA, love Anderson, whose stories? And and when I, when Darcy uh, brought the survey results back and you were one of the six that was chosen, uh, I was really happy uh, because I just think your stories, what I know about it, I love, and now I get to learn more. So um, thank you for accepting the nomination. Uh, thank you, and it's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to be nominated by my classmates, so I want to give them a thanks as well, because this experience for me has been, you know, life-changing, and, and I'm just looking forward to continuing to build off of this UCLA family that I've acquired. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, so if you're, if you know Derek, you're going to get to know him a little better. If, if you don't know Derek, you know, yeah, what if, what if UCLA becomes a family for you? You know, what what about his story could inform your story? Uh, I love Anderson. Uh, There's no recipe for Anderson. It's a very entrepreneurially minded place. And uh, we don't give you a recipe. We give you incredible ingredients and a chef's kitchen. And then you get to set some stuff on fire (laughs) (laughs) and run run some experiments with your own career while you build an incredible network of of professional colleagues who will feel like family when you're done. So. Um, oh, and I forgot to introduce, so Derek Cox, class of 2021, uh, sports agent, athlete, marketer, entrepreneur, we've got an entrepreneur story, um, was originally in section five, so we also have the hybrid, pre-COVID, everybody's hybrid during COVID, um, did the global access program, so we're going to we're gonna use our normal uh, before, during, and, and look ahead, you know, the three, the three epics of the, of the telling of Derek's tale. And, uh, and we've got our fun new lightning round at the end. So um, that's, um, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to endeavor to do here to, to really help Derek's story, help you write your story. So, um, so with no further ado, and you, and you have some, we have some, we have some photo, some photos along the way. So we'll be sharing screen and all that. So um, with no further ado, Derek, uh, if you were to introduce yourself, you know, where'd you grow up? What, what, what was little Derek like? <laughs> yeah, uh, for myself, you know, growing up in North Carolina, uh, if I were described to describe myself, you know, I'm all, I've always been laid back, you know, and I think, I, I think uh, the, the way I figured out how to navigate, you know, life just came from being the youngest of five siblings. And so being in a household where, yeah, you are the, the youngest, you know, you get walked over, stepped <laughs> over to get to the food, to get to the snacks. And so I had that experience and, but, but at the same time, you know, it, it just taught me how to, it taught me how to be generous because I was able to observe from a distance and see things just because that's always the place that I was placed in. It's mm-hmm. just that place of, okay, uh, you get her last. And so for me, it just, it gave me a level of consideration for others and that ability to, 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 to almost be in tune with, with and socially aware of situations mm-hmm. and emotions and circumstances. And so, it, it made me effective in terms of former relationships because that dynamic that went on in my house. And so great people to be around. You know, I have a twin sister actually. And 
so so you know I had and she's older than me. She's 15 minutes older than me. So <laughs> you know even there I, I didn't win. I didn't win. I'm I'm legit. I'm 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 legitimately the youngest in the family. So uh, you know just having that experience in life and and and, and you know us being close in age, my siblings. You know, it was a great experience and, and it helped shape and form, you know, who I am today. What's what's the age range from from oldest to youngest? Yeah. So the oldest is uh, my brother, Lyman, and Lyman is 52 now, 51, 51 now. Excuse me. He's 51 now. And Lyman, you know, my, my mom and dad had him when. My mom was 17. My dad was 19. Oh, and okay. so, yeah. So, so they were young and, 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 you know, just, my dad was just, you know, just graduated from high school and, and this is just an old school way. My parents are still married. 50, 50, uh, what is it? 51 years Ooh, this year, 51 years of marriage. That's beautiful. 51 years of marriage and, uh, still going, you know, hot, hot you know, hot down the runway. So, uh, uh, real, real proud of my parents, especially for my father, just as a, you know, just as, I mean, and, and even in today, like you just say, just for families, period, for mm -hmm. them to stick together, I think is, is noteworthy. But the fact that this is a, you know, a black family where it's hard to see a lot of black families stay united that way. I give my father a ton of credit and my mom because my dad is hard to be with you know my dad is, <laughs> my, my dad isn't the easiest guy to be with so uh you know them together working and and making it work for five kids you know and 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 so you were asking about the age range Lyman is 51 uh and then next comes Alicia Alicia is uh 38 and then Travis is 36 and then uh uh, and, well, Travis, he just turned 37. Matter of fact, and uh, uh, actually, and I and I and man, I'm I'm I messed up my numbers because I haven't thought about it in so long. But Alicia just Alicia just celebrated her 40th. Travis okay. just celebrated his 37, and then Shannon and I are 34. And so, you know, Lyman was like the big brother because Lyman's 51. So you know, he was like the the uncle almost for for you know for me. Because, you know, Lyman was, there was 12 years before my parents had the next kid. Yeah. You know, they had Lyman and then they waited 12 years before they had Alicia. And so uh, there's that big gap, you know, but, but you know, the relationship and the bond, it's all there just because of the way that, you know, my parents were able to, you know, nurture that, nurture all the relationships. And, and, I, and I'm always proud of my family for this as well. Uh, you know, five kids. And everybody graduated from college. So oh. for our family, you know, everybody's everybody's doing well and, and and honoring our parents the way that I think that they deserve to be honored. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. My wife is she's fourth of five and she's she's the same thing. It's like it's always a math problem when you ask how old anybody is. Cause, oh, cause you gotta go, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Okay, well, are we in the spring? Okay, if it's spring, they haven't gotten yet, you know. Right. It's Man, it's it's uh and then remembering the birthdays, like it's like, oh, you know, trying to remember that. And now we're at the age where we have kids and and so remembering the kids' birthday. So group text, that helps us survive, you know, and, and, and we need to be even better about that. Like giving hey, let them know a week in advance. Don't tell us the day of, let us know a week in advance so we can get something in the mail. Hey. Uh, uh, you know, Alicia's birthday is next week. It's a week away. You might want to get something in the mail on Amazon, you know, get it out early because, uh, yeah, these birthdays for <laughs> nieces and nephews, brothers and sisters, and, and moms and dads, they, you know, they, uh, they pop up fast. Oh, uh, it's great. That's great. So, wow. So when you say you were youngest, it's not youngest of two or youngest of three, but it's youngest of five with a twin. Oh, I love it. I'm always jealous. Uh, I wish I had a twin. I, or I say that, you know, I'm sure it's <laughs> different to do it, but it just seems like it'd be cool to have somebody who, you know, like, I don't know, it seems like it'd be cool, but what, what's, what, what's the good, what's the good and the bad of having a twin? You know, I think 
It just depends. I think it depends on, because, you know, I, I have a twin sister. So, you know, the bad thing is I tried to play with her like a, you know, like she was a boy. And, mm. and as, as, you know, growing up, that created a lot of friction. We'll just put it that way. And so, <laughs> but, it, but, it, but the good thing about it is, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of, it made me grow up you know, faster, just because I had to, I, I had to realize the dynamics of relationships and how to relate to, to others. And, and, and so that was really something that, you know, I had to, to understand and make an adjustment for, but, you know, when you have a twin, like that's somebody that you can always rely on. And, and even in high school, you know, we were able to rely on one another. Uh, we hung out with much of the same crowd. You know, I played baseball in high school. So, uh, that that brought us around, you know, some good people that we were able to hang out with. And so we had a lot of similar friends. And, you know, because of that, it was a level of protection that we were able to offer one another on, on, on both ends. She was able to protect me from, you know, relationships, you know, with, with females. I was able to protect her from, you know, relationships with males in terms of being able to provide, you know, just the the, the proper information and insight and, 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 and encouragement on different matters that you can just have from navigating that social scene that we all had to navigate in high school. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That, I think it's that comfort or security or sounding board. Yeah. My, my sister was a freshman when I was a senior and we, you know, I drove her to school every day and uh, yeah, and she <laughs> I had no idea. No idea how clueless I was in uh, the boy girl conversation until, you know, because driving to school, you know, we're listening to Bon Jovi or whatever, but we're also talking and she goes, she's, she's playing you. What, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. The yeah. sweet, the sweet little person. I, what I thought, you know, she just set me straight on a couple of relationships and, and, and through college also that was, you know, not a twin, you know, she's three years younger. So, um, Wow, to have a to have a powerful woman who's the same age as you. I mean, that must have been like having an extra brain, you know. Because I think I always my experience was just my sister could see relationships. You, you know, just you know, I'm playing checkers and she's playing chess, right? So, <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, good to have no, her on. Good to have her on your team. That's 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 neat. No, nah, you hit the nail on the head, and I think that's exactly what it is. You know, uh, we can just we have different perspectives, and when you can have somebody that uh, can can give you their perspective and, and you trust that then it's it's extremely valuable yeah and i love how you even at the outset you know i i, I observe I, I i notice what's going on you know like mm. life taught derek to be someone who's aware of i mean all these giant people <laughs> yeah if your big brother's almost 20 years older than you you know that's that's a lot of tall people running around you know everybody's tall when you're a kid but they're really tall, right? Exactly. Exactly. You, yeah, you're exactly right. And But yeah, that experience, though, you know, was one that I, I look at and I say, yeah, uh, uh, down the line, it, it served me well and, and helped me in terms of former relationships today. Now, do you have any uh, pictures from that chapter? I do. Um, I, and and, and uh, I can share my screen. All right. Okay. Well, this is my favorite part. So, uh, yeah, let's get to see some pictures of some of these folks we've been getting here about Shannon and Travis and Alicia and Lyman and the whole yeah. crew. Oh, and that, handsome, and that handsome and that handsome fellow right there. <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, I thank my mom and my dad. Uh, and in this photo, uh, to the to the to the to the left of the screen, you see my family. Uh, my dad is not in the photo. My dad is actually uh, right now in this during this time. He's he's deployed. My dad served in the Navy for 24 years. Mm. So uh, and, and a portion of that was in the reserves. So uh, he did a, He did his he did his duty serving the country while he was doing that. You know, my mom had to hold down the fort and my mom uh, by trade. She's a elementary school teacher so she taught first and second grade while we were growing up and and, and you know her, her 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 background in education i i i credit that to 
all of us kids graduating from college. You know, she just put that emphasis on it. And, and that was something that was just important. You know, we, you could, you could do, you could play sports, extracurricular activities, but the academics, you had to dial that in. But in this photo, you can see right next to my mom, uh, standing beside her with the Gumby, with the Gumby haircut. <laughs> that was the oh, style. That was the style. That was the eighties. I remember like that. <laughs> the late eighties. Uh, so I'm surprised my parents let him get that haircut. And, and, and the only reason he probably was able to have that is because my dad was deployed. Had my dad been at home, <laughs> it would have been a no go <laughs> easily, easily a no go. But, uh, Nonetheless, we have, uh, you know, Alicia. Alicia is in the teal and, and white shirt, uh, and, and Alicia is, you know, currently she she's she she has her two kids as well. She has two kids. She works. She's in the banking industry, uh, working for uh, BB&T right now, and uh, she she's actually pursuing her master's in business as well. Uh, at East Carolina University, and uh, she'll be completing that soon. And so, uh, still dialing in the education. And then right there in the middle, you know, the two little deep deeps. That's that's me, and that's my twin sister Shannon. And we, uh, you know, we we we. Hey, we, we, we figured out a way to, 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 to make each other better and, and to help one another out. So that was, uh, you know, we had our friction, but then we also had, you know, our, uh, our, our successes where we help one another. So uh, she's doing well as also she works for, uh, Shannon is working for uh, Cisco and she's in the sales, a sales role for Cisco. Uh, she's also, become pretty influential on Instagram as an influencer uh, and modeling. So she has her off the field, I'll call it, things that she's into that's uh, working well for her. So uh, real happy for her. And then uh, outside of me in the navy blue shirt, that's my second oldest brother, Travis. And uh, Travis, he works for uh, Data Robot, and he's a manager for Data Robot, uh, and he has his master's in business as well. He's got his MBA from East Carolina University. He actually did his at East Carolina University while he was playing football uh, for East Carolina University, and, and East Carolina is in my hometown. It's in my hometown of Greenville, North Carolina. And so because Travis got into football and, you know, was really good at it, it really inspired me. And the photo right beside this one, which is this photo right here, this is a photo of me and that's a photo of Travis. And, and I wanted to highlight that because, you know, Travis was really instrumental in terms of me pursuing after football mm. and, and 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 it brings up a conversation that i recently had with one of my best friends and you know i was uh, i was sitting around we were a few of my friends from high school they came out to la to hang out and i went up and met them and, and hung out and and uh you know my friend his name's pierre and uh you know, just sitting there with the guys. These guys were talented as well. They all could have played college football. Could have gone to college for free mm. had they had they had they had that vision. And and I remember while we were hanging out in L.A. recently, you know, Pierre has said, you know, he was like, man, you you know, we uh, us uh, us guys, we had never seen anybody do that. Like we didn't know it was possible. He mm. was like, you knew you knew it was possible because your brother achieved that. And, you know, I never thought about it that way. Like, I just, I just was like, you know, why wouldn't the other guys think that they could achieve it? Why wouldn't, like, I could, I could look at them and see that they were talented and could have played college football if they wanted to, but they couldn't see it because nobody 
from their household or their community had done it. And so for me, it was, you know, Pierre really brought up a great point in the sense that, you know, for, for Travis to do that, uh, it, it showed me that I could do it. And, and personally, when he did it, he, he was going into his senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. He was going into his senior year. He went to East Carolina University football camp. And Travis, it wasn't as if he had had these crazy stats his junior year. He went to East Carolina uh, and, and did the football camp and just like crushed it, did extremely well at the camp, ran extremely fast and was just athletic. And East Carolina offered him a full scholarship before he had even played his senior year of football. And so wow. they just liked him off the raw potential. And uh. I was going into the ninth grade when this happened. And my brother Travis was going into the 12th grade. And so when this happened, for me, I said, oh wow, that's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. I had a goal, I had a goal going into high school. I'm getting a full scholarship to play football in college. And 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 so that I was dialed into that freshman year, sophomore, junior, senior year. That was what I was focused on. And it brings me back to what Pierre said. Like I knew that that was something that I could achieve because, you know, I see this, I see this joker every day. Like I see Travis every day. I, I know what he eats for breakfast. I know what he <laughs> eats for lunch and dinner. I see him put on his clothes. I know he's human. So for me, it was just like, oh, if this, if this guy can do it, <laughs> by all means, I can do it. And so I went after it. And, yeah. you know, for me, that was, that was like what paved the way for me to really go after football full speed. And, you know, on this, on this, on this uh, collage I have, as well, you know, this is me right here with the Chargers. And, you know, I got to play seven years professionally. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, San Diego Chargers, Minnesota Vikings, Baltimore Ravens, New England Patriots. And, you know, that experience really helped prepare me for the NBA. And the pressure of the expectations mm-hmm. and the demands required out of you. You know, I had a tough, I had a tough stint when I came out here and played for the Chargers. You know, it wasn't comfortable at all. You're talking about when you play at the professional level, I mean, even at at the college level, you're playing in front of a large amount of fans and they either are with you or <laughs> not, <laughs> or they are not with you. And, and 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 you know, like I came out here to San Diego uh, on a free uh, uh, as a free agent, and there was a lot of excitement around it. Mm-hmm. And 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 you know, I, I I had high hopes of performing well. I had I had performed well up to up till this point. You know, mm-hmm. the first four years of my career, like I really, I did it, I did, I did very well. And, you know, for some reason, when I came out here to San Diego, it just, it didn't pan out the way we had all envisioned. And so I had to deal with the tension of the organization, mm-hmm. you know, the tension of the fans. And, you know, not cracking underneath that pressure and, and just having to, having to deal with it. There, there was no way to escape. I had to deal with it. I had to go there every day, no matter how much I wanted to, to, to hide, I had to go and, and bear through it. I had to bear through it. And after dealing with that pressure, it just, it made me into a different creature. Mm. Because I, when, when pressure comes at me now, I, I've experienced a different type of heat and pressure. Mm. It makes me think about a diamond. And I, I don't even like to think of that, but like it makes me think of a diamond because of that pressure and heat that was placed on me. And 
and I didn't fold underneath it. And when I, now that I've come out on the other side of it, I look at obstacles and pressure and challenges a completely different way. They don't, they don't affect me the same way because I've been tried and tested under intense pain and, and pressure. So I wasn't thankful for that experience in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I was ready to hit the eject button uh, <laughs> the, the moment the pressure came on. But I can see that, yes, it was it was beneficial, you know, for me. And that leads me into the last picture, which is my my little deep deep. I, my little that's my son, Asa. Aww. Seven years old now, uh, first grade. And, you know, it, 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 as you know, Dylan, having kids like it also it teaches it teaches the parents as well. You know, just as much as we're trying to teach our children, uh, our children teach us so much. And being able to be Asa's father, you know, has really given me a foundation and, and a philosophy for for how I want to be perceived and and and, and experienced by by others. You know, first and foremost, him. You know, one one mm -hmm. characteristic that comes to mind is just patience, mm -hmm. and I think that's a that's a that is a a wonderful way you can show somebody love mm. is patience. And there's a there's there's a there's a scripture that love is patient, and you know, with my son, I try to at all accounts exhibit patience, and. As you know, with kids, they they will try your patience. <laughs> Every kids day, will test your patience. Every single day. Every day, <laughs> they'll test your patience. But but like I relish that, like I relish that, uh, Dylan, because I get to hone that skill of patience. Mm -hmm. And 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 when I'm exhibiting patience with him. I, he he experienced he's experiencing love like I get to I, I get to see how that impacts him how he how he even embraces me and 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 he tr how he trusts in me is all related to me exhibiting that patience with him to where I don't lose my cool and I don't you know, have these emotional roller coasters for him. Like he's getting one consistent thing with me at all times. And if I, if I don't even need to raise my voice with my son, I don't need to yell. All I need to do is deepen my voice. I'd be like, son, all I got to do is drop it an octave. I drop it an octave <laughs> and that, and that gets the job done. So it's, it's given me a philosophy for, you know, how I want to be as a dad. And it's, because I was just initially, I was just relying on what my dad had done for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, every man has to come to that point of figuring out, okay, what's going to be your form of fatherhood? Who are you going to be as a father? And I thank my son for really putting me in that place and mindset of understanding what type of father I want to be and how I want him to experience me. So, that's life before the NBA, Dylan. Wow. 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 How do you pronounce your son's name? Asa. A-S-A. -A. Asa. Yeah. Um, well, you know, yeah, we don't, don't leave this screen for just a second. You know, um, just things that I would ever underline. Um, you know, we all bring our whole self, you know, management is a contact sport, right? You don't manage people from a book right? Football is a contact sport. You don't play football from a book. And, you know, when I read your application, I was so excited because, uh, you know, I, everybody knows my biases. These are my explicit biases, man. I am a sucker for division one athletes, let alone professional athletes. I love academy grads. I love Mormon missionaries. I love student body presidents. Um, you know, I love people who've studied abroad. The you know, sorority presidents, you know, like I love 
people, I love, you know, the, the fun thing about our job is we get to read people's story, right? We get to see a resume. We get these two letters of recommendation. Um, we, we have the Super Saturday interview. We, and then we get to read the person's voice, right? You know, people think, oh, the essays are just a, no, we read every single one. Multiple people read every single essay. And, you know, we want to know a person is ready for grad school, right? Loves learning, wants to learn. It's school, but it's, it's school for working professionals who are dialed in, who have pre-existing friends and family and children often. And, you know, we need a little bit of, a little bit of intestinal fortitude, right? And, um, and we're hoping, we're ever hoping that, you know, our old Dean, uh, Judy Olean, you know, she said, Dylan, my job is go hire great research faculty. Your job is go find great learners. And if we do our, each of our jobs well, she said, I'll put great research teachers in the front of the room and you put great learners in the room and everybody wins. And I've heard every faculty member here say, you know, as much as it's important what I share from the front of the room, it's, it's important what you share left and right. And, and that's the management piece of it, right? We're getting, this is a degree in management, achieving things with and through the time and t- effort and talents of people around me. Sometimes I'm their boss. Sometimes I'm just a friend. Sometimes they're my boss. But I'm going to bring that entrepreneurial awareness. You know, I love when you say, you know, I, I, I learn to observe people, right? Look at, look at that beautiful family, you know, with your father and mother sticking through good times and bad times. You know, that can't be easy. <laughs> to have no. five little ones with your husband off, you know, in the Navy, right? Like <laughs> on the other side of the planet, you know, pre FaceTime, pre, you know, yes. like, you know, like she, she's got some intestinal fortitude. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he's leading by example. And then, you know, you're watching, you've got two older role models and, you know, on the, on the boy side of the spectrum, and you got two girl role models with your sister's you know, and, and you're, you're, you know, I love your reflections with your high school friend, Pierre, like, you know, Derek, you just did it. Like I could have done it, but I didn't even think to do it, you know, and you're just going, well, I didn't not think to do it because if Travis can do it, so can I, right? Like I, this guy's not Superman. I watch him eat in the morning. I know he's a slob or no, no offense. Travis. You know, like, <laughs> like you've seen behind the curtain. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and it really is. I love that idea for, for all human beings. Right. Like, if we see it, we can be it, right? Like somebody, somebody's got to go first, but after they go first, then can they, can they reach back and, and, and put a hand out and pull me with, right? And, and then, you know, just, I just, you know, the, that you had to perform at your very best in a physical, you know, football is like ballet with car crashes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, and you got to do all that. And then people are going to Monday morning, literally, Monday morning quarterback you like where's that expression come from it comes from the lived experience that you had as a working professional seven years five different companies because of you know a football yeah. team is a company yeah. right with 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 customers who want to be satisfied right there's only one you know trophy every year and there's 32 combatants right like I just you know think to myself in in faculty committee and in the admissions pre-reading like man, this gentleman has the potential to be an incredible classmate because all that's going to walk in the door with him. So sorry for my little sermonette. I do these, but you know, like that's why it's so fun to think about what kind of learning village, learning community, you know, is the next generation going to get to be. And for those of you who are, who are entering this year or entering in a future, because you know, who knows when people watch this video going forward, but like, Everything that Derek is walks in the door with him, personal and professional. And I think sometimes people get this kind of stereotype like business school, you know, you got to have been a accountant or, you know, like, you know, it's like, you know, I, I forgot to say, I'm so sorry, Derek, I forgot to tell everybody at the introduction that you were a former professional athlete for seven years. That's, we'll have to make sure we put that in the trailer. <laughs> but, you know, UCLA is a magnet for the time and talent of, of, some of the smartest, hardworking, highest aspiration young people from the planet. We have 125 different graduate programs of study. Business is one of them. And, uh, you know, it's like our honor that you get to look at all the places you could go to school and say, you know, I think I think I want to aim at UCLA. And then your classmates, you know, like, 
you know, they're going to be bragging about you for a long time, right? Like, yeah, I had a classmate, he was an NFL player and then became a sports marketing, you know, sports agent, you know, reinvented himself, you know, it's all, and, and it's that even, even now inspiration, like, look at, if Derek can do that, maybe I can start my own business. You know, maybe I can be an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur. Maybe I can be a change agent within my already existing good job, right? Like we all learn from each other all the time. So heck of a first slide, my friend. Man, no, this has been fun and uh, I'll keep it going. Uh, I'll move into uh, life during the NBA. Is that good? Yeah, well, wait, wait, wait. You got so what's that? What's that little? What's that little accolade? How many people you picked off named Tom Brady and Peyton Manning? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was able to have a, a good experience, you know. And I didn't notice at the time when it happened, you know, it just kind of just happened, and I was just like, okay, that's just the name of the game. But it's become a, you know, a, a milestone of my professional career. But in the first game of my professional football career rookie season first game we go up to Indianapolis and we're playing the Colts and on the first drive of the game they they driven the, the Colts Peyton Manning has marched the Colts all the way down the field and they're in scoring position and I'm going to Reggie Wayne who is probably a future Hall of Famer and Peyton Manning definitely and so I think he might actually be in the class. Uh, Peyton Man he might be in this year's class, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And they're marching. They're about to score. And I happen to get an interception off of Peyton Manning uh, as he's trying to throw a ball over my head. He thought I was in man-to-man -man coverage, but I happened to be in cover too. He had never seen me play. So he didn't understand my disguise. So therefore I had an advantage and, and I got me an interception uh, first drive of my rookie game. And so that right there was like a, a milestone in my career. And then as well, I got to intercept Tom Brady uh, uh, year four of my career. And that was actually, that's when that goes down as my most favorite interception in the NFL uh, because the way it was made, it was this acrobatic catch. Uh, it was in traffic and it was crazy because I heard, I don't know how I heard my coach scream from off the sideline because you were, we're in a stadium that's, you know, full and fans are yelling and it's defense. So it's not quiet. Like when the defense is on the field for the whole team, it's loud. Yeah. And I, I don't know how, how I heard, my coach yelled to me, get inside, get inside, in the middle of a play. It was in the middle of a play I heard my coach say that. We were on the sideline. We were on, I was on the, the home team sideline. But he said, get inside, get inside. And I just do a quick spin move to get back inside. And when I spin and turn around, uh, the ball is right there. And I had to jump up, both me and the receiver jump into the air and I'm able to intercept it. I don't have the picture. I did it in February. I showed you that picture in February, but I, I don't know. have it on this slide. I know. Uh, but definitely for my career, you know, those are two milestones that I'll, I'll always, I'll always share about and talk about. Well, and I'm not, I'm still not going to leave you, leave, let you leave this slide. I love this slide, but I, you know, just to, just to kind of, you know, people always want to know like, what's, what's the culture of Anderson. And I just want to, I, yeah, I, I'm surprised you don't have that picture. I, if it was, if I were you, <laughs> that picture would be on my forehead, but that's just me, right? I have a, I have a, you know, inferiority complex and I'd be trying to compensate for it. So, you know, it's, it's just fascinating to me, Derek, that, you know, as you, as you chose the pictures, like the story that you told about this page, you, you actually started in the down chapter when you went to San Diego with, the free agency and the high expectations and, and it wasn't, you know, the perfect cultural fit. And that happens in our careers. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to Google. It's going to be perfect. And, you know, I don't know, I'm not a Googler and, you know, it's, it's, and then this other company, like, I don't know if this is a good thing. And you get there and there's great chemistry, right? Like the, the magic of management is that you work with what is there. You know, you don't always get to pick your teammates, right? I mean, you can be an entrepreneur and hire everybody, but even then after a while, you got to hire people you don't know if you keep growing. 
And so I just love it how you, you know, you, you took four pictures and, and one of those pictures you, you actually started with not the, you know, not the shiny, you know, but, but like one of those journeys, like, I think we often learn more, you know, you said love is patient, right? We learn more when life is asking us to be patient than when it's the first drive <laughs> you, pick <laughs> off, you pick off Peyton Manning. I bet you were unsufferable that week. <laughs> like, uh, this NFL ain't so hard. What? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. I said, oh, if the NF, if I get interceptions, I, I was like, I didn't have any interceptions this easy in college. So oh, I was yes. like, I'm about to, I'm about to eat real good in the NFL. That was my initial thought when I got that interception. No, we didn't even tell them that you were, we didn't even tell them about Wake Forest. You want to just quick on Wake Forest? Or is that anywhere in here? Just your college no, ball. Uh, no. no I mean, William and Mary, William and Mary, William and Mary. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wake Forest, I, 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 I tried to get in there. I sent them, I sent, I called, I, I knocked on the door, but they were, they weren't interested. So I had to go up to William and Mary. And so, yes, uh, William and Mary, yeah, had a, had a great stint there. Um, I did have a photo of William and Mary up here initially, and, and I removed it. And one of the great things about William and Mary, you know, was I got to serve as captain for two years at William and Mary. Um, and for me, that was, you know, a tremendous experience just because my teammates nominated me. And because they nominated me, it wasn't, it wasn't coaches nominated me, it was teammates nominated me. So for me, it made, it, it helped me understand that I had that impact on the men in the locker room and they, and I had gained their respect and their trust to say that they wanted me to be their captain. And I wouldn't have it any other way to be in a leadership role. And so that experience at William & Mary was, was a large part of opening up me getting drafted to the Jacksonville Jaguars as well. Um, and I don't need to go into great detail about that, but one other thing about William & Mary is that they inducted me into the Hall of Fame uh, in, in December of 2019. So I, they gave me the award, or excuse me, they gave me the notification, but COVID, because of COVID, we haven't been able to have the award ceremony, but uh, I've, been, I've been given the notification that uh, you are, or I am going to be a member of William and Mary's uh, Hall of Fame. So that's something that's new, and 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 you know, I'm I'm extremely honored to to join and be a part of that uh, distinguished class because that was, I never even set out to do that as my goal. It was never my goal. But the thing is, what was my goal was I said, look, this program can be better than what it is. And if I just commit to the program and, and, and if I demand out of others the, only what I demand out of myself, then this program is going to get better. And, and I told the other captains that I said, look, we're going to be here every workout over the summer, period. We're here every workout because that's the only way I can, we can demand it out of the other players is if we're here every day for the workouts. And if we're here every day for the workouts, as a unit, as a team, we're just going to naturally develop chemistry and the culture because we've just been collaborating together and we've been doing this as a team. And the summer, it's, it's in the dark times where you make your bang. It's in the, where nobody's looking. Not when, not when the media starts to blast the game out. It's in the summer, June, July, August, hot, summer, heat. That's where you make your, your name for your team. And so we, if we can get the guys to be here, we're going to have us a real good shot. And, and, and I was able to help turn the program around and take us to, uh, take us away from a, a streak of losing seasons into an era of winning seasons and, and men getting drafted to go into the NFL. So uh, real, real, real grateful that I got to have that experience because it was never my goal to make it to the NFL either. Really? It was not my goal because I said really? I did not. I, I, once I once I got to college, and and I had got late into my college career, you know, professors were kind of like, "What's your next plan?" And William and Mary, it was academics. They weren't they weren't concerned about athletics. What's your next plan? What mm -hmm. what are you doing after football? Mm -hmm. Life isn't a game. And so I'm thinking that way. Like I need to have something figured out. And it wasn't as if I was some statistical, 
you know, just like stud on the field. I wasn't like, I, I just had <clears throat> decent, decent stats. Mm -hmm. And so my focus was on, it was like, it was a love for my teammates. Like, look, I'm, I'm, I need to be here every day in the summer because it's going to make the other players better because we're here every day over the summer. And, and if I can help make the other players better, then we're going to have a better team. And this is going to be a, a, a better, this is going to be a better legacy for William and Mary, the program. And, 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 and the lesson was just, if you take your, if you take your eyes off of yourself and you start putting them on others and your initiative is to help others, man, you'll see your dreams get answered. You'll see your dreams get, and, and, and that experience is one that I, I take with me moving forward because I had no intentions on, you know, getting drafted in the third round of the NFL draft, you know, from William and Mary, a small division one double A school known for academics. Mm -hmm. Second oldest college in America, but not a football Second powerhouse. <laughs> no, 1693. Harvard is the oldest. William and Mary is second. 1693. Academics, football is not the main thing. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Well, I, I think we, I mean, I, I can't wait for the rest of this, but, you know, we can drop the mic right there. You know, love of team, you know, like when does that switch get switched? You know, this is, it, we don't even call ourselves a business school. It's the Anderson School of Management, management working with and through the time and talents of other people. And uh, you put your team first. I don't even know if people really get what it is to do two a days. You know, two a days is the name of something that they do in football in those, in those, the, you know, the, the off months when the cameras are off yeah. and it's, you know, it's two workouts a day. And in the South, you know, that means the second workout is in the afternoon and it's humid and it's hot. <laughs> and that separates, you know, that separates people um, into different levels of athletic um, accomplishment. Right. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. So those experiences, you know, are ones that help shape me and, 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 I, and I'm grateful for, them, you know, grateful for them and, and, and we'll just continue to move forward with them. But I like what you said about Anderson, you know, and it just being Anderson School of Management. And, and that's, and that's what we're doing. Like it's, yeah, it's, you know, collaborating with others and, and being, being able to, to put a team together. Like that's, that's just, that's just the name of it. Like that's like, if you can put the team together, and it can be cohesive and there can be a culture like you really have something special and, and it's and it's hard i'm sure it's hard like to, to to create and manufacture so i don't take it lightly and 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 i've had some experiences that just have helped me reflect and be able to say okay i might have a night a clue about how to create you know an atmosphere that produces a positive culture that helps everybody achieve and perform at their best. Mm. Well, okay, perfect. So we have we have we have painted the picture of who this gentleman was. So when when did the NBA seed get planted? How did how did all this turn into Anderson? So we'll go over to the next slide. And you know, for me, the NBA is something that, like I, I, one thing is like you, you, when you start hanging around people with their NBAs, like you, you all, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 the saying goes true. Like whoever you're hanging around, they have some sort of effect on you, whatever you're around, like that's gonna have an effect on you. And, and I was just around a lot of people with NBAs, but uh, additionally, I knew that from my days of playing football, I said, you know what? I think there's a better way to represent players uh, from the agent side of the business. And mm -hmm. I want to be a force on that side of representing players. It came from my experience strictly where it was just, I was the type, if I knew what to do, I would have done it full speed. Like if they told me, hey, you need to run through that brick wall, to get it, I would have ran through the brick wall to get it. And there are a lot of athletes out there sitting out there just like myself that are thinking that same thing, 
you know, they want to know what, what do I need to do on the field? You know, mm -hmm. to, what do I need to do to prepare for the field? And, and what do I need to do off the field? What are things that I can be doing off the field to where I can set myself up and my family and potentially my family's family down the road just because I made some key decisions while I was playing football. And business is how I see the athlete. Not a legal case. I don't see him as a legal case. So I didn't go to law school. I went to business school because I see that athlete as a business. So I said, look, I need, I want to understand more about business and I want to do business with the athlete. I want the athlete to be able to, you know, have somebody that's a business conduit that can help them set up business and, and be able to say, hey, when I'm done with the game, I can transition successfully because of what I paved while I was playing the game. You got a finite time to play this game yeah. called football. And if you don't take advantage of it, then you, it'll be time wasted. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a prime opportunity. I even look at Anderson the same way. Anytime you can get associated with a large name brand, it's, mm. a time, it's a time and an opportunity to level up, to get some doors open, to gain some leverage. And so you got to be strict. You got to be, you got, you have to be strategic about how you're using it. And so I want to pair up with athletes to do that. That's what's, that's why I said, look, I need to go and get the NBA. I can hire, if the, if the player gets in trouble, I can hire a criminal attorney. Uh, if, 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 if it comes to a contract, like business school, we, we do negotiations. We study negotiations. We read contracts. We, we business people understand contracts. That's a part of the, the, the business. And so business school made sense for me. It said, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, especially here in L.A., at UCLA, it makes sense for me to be here getting the NBA where you're located in like a sports capital, if you want to call it that. And mm -hmm. relationships, resources. That's all here. And so it made sense for me to do the NBA. And I, this experience has been one where it's like, like, you know, like the people that you meet, people that you get, you know, connected with and introduced to. I don't know, like, I, I just don't see myself being able to, to, to do what I'm doing right now and to be in position to do what I'm about to do if, if I went to another university. You know, if I went to another, uh, you know, program, a master's program, I don't, I don't see myself being able to do what I'm, what I'm going to go after. And so I'm real excited about what's coming down the funnel. But we'll look at these photos to talk yeah. about life during the NBA. So, you know, right here, this was a, this was a fun moment. This was, this was, this was leadership foundations. Mm -hmm. Which every do y'all still do the ropes course? Oh yeah, I mean, COVID, you know, it was all online COVID last year. Out. But fingers crossed, you know, the goal is we're back on campus this fall. That's what everybody's working towards. Let the vaccines okay. do their magic, and let's get back to being humans again. Yeah. So that this is the start for me. It, it's leadership foundations, and uh, you know, I, I want to commend you, you all, for for structuring this into the MBA program. It's a great way to break the ice for us students and to even draw closer to one another. But also, like I discovered something about myself too, you know, in the midst of leadership foundations. And, 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 and here, this photo, you know, I was getting strapped in by a man. His name is Linwood. Linwood, Linwood he, work, he works uh, at, what is it? Was it called Paul Volcrum? Is that the name of the place? I believe so, yeah. Linwood works there. He might, I, 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 I don't know if he's still there, but he's strapping me in because I'm about to climb up one of those light poles you see behind me. Little, little, little thin beam, <laughs> you know, stretching up high. I don't even know how many feet. This had to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 50. This had to be about 50. 
Yeah. It had to be about 50 feet, maybe 60 feet in the air that you climb up the light pole to the top and then you stand on top of this light pole. And so I'm talking, you're talking about, I mean, the diameter of the top of this light bulb pole, <laughs> the diameter could not have been more than like, it couldn't have been more than, it couldn't have been more than eight inches, nine inches, because my feet were hanging off both on the back and the front. So my heels weren't on it, nor like, all, the only thing up there was like the, 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 the arcs of my mm -hmm. feet. And I'm standing on top of this pole and I got to leap and grab the trapeze bar. Right. Now I'm the, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually the second man to go. There was another, there was another guy. His name's Cody. I, don't, I can't remember Cody's last name. Cody was in a different section. Um, but Cody went before me and, and Cody did it. And I was like, and I'm the professional athlete. So I'm like, I, I, I have to do this. <laughs> like it was, a little, and it, it's a little intimidating because it's like it's high up, and it's like okay, like I need to do this uh, because if I don't, like it's it, it it just looks bad for all professional athletes. It looks bad for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm up there. I'm focused too, Dylan. Like I'm locked in, and. And I climb all the way up to the top. I get on top of this beam and I stare it down. And, and, the, and before I jump, Dylan, before I jump, Linwood starts tugging on my, my rope. What do they call it? Like a belay? I think they call it a belay. Mm -hmm. The safety harness belay. Yeah. The safety oh. harness. He starts tugging on it because, because there are people that are holding the harness. Like they're my classmates. My cohorts, they're they're actually holding the end of the belay to like assist me. Like when I if I if I fall or when I let go, they're they're there to assist me so that like I don't just drop straight to the ground. And so I uh, okay, so I ease I ease down to the ground. And so um they're a factor in this, but before I go, he's tugging on it and it's striking against the back of my my head. Like you can see the rope, you can see the rope behind me. Yeah, right. You see that rope. And it's striking me on the head while I'm on top of this beam. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. And I'm about to fall off and I'm angry. I'm angry because I'm like, I'm like, do you know what's at stake, Linwood? Do you know what's at stake? Like there's a lot on the line because I'm because I'm a pro athlete and I need to, I need to hold it down for other pro athletes. I I I, I can't be the one to fall off. And Cody just did it. And so he find he's like you know um, he, he he's like before you, you know he just he just doing that to mess with me and so he he finally stops and then I say let's go and I jump and grab the bar and I, when I grab the bar I, I think they put butter or something or grease on the bar because I grab it and I feel and I'm used to grabbing bars just from lifting weights and I'm like I know how they should feel. <laughs> and, I, and I grab it and it it slides a little bit like it it slid in my hands a little bit <laughs> and I'm like oh shoot and so I I, I I just doubled down on my grip and and sealed it in I put the vice grip on it and boom I'm locked in and I'm and I'm hanging there and uh and I make and you know I and I and I exclaim out like I I, I yelled out like you know like uh, like a scream like I was like oh like you know because I was feeling it I was just it, it was a rush and and Linwood was like before you be, he was like wait before you drop he was like look around so I take a moment and I look around uh, and, and, and he was like what do you see and I was just like it's clear like it, it's, it's clear and and he was like, okay, good. And then he was like, now let it go. And when I come down to the ground, you know, he was like, he gave me a lesson real quick. He said, he said, he said, look, son, don't ever forget about the people that helped you get there. And he pointed, he pointed to the people standing right there. 
next to me. And and this was my these are my classmates. And and I remember seeing Sahara. Uh and I and I and I and I and I look at Sahara and I and I see the rest of them, Cody as well. And and I'm like, hmm. And then he said, he said, you were so locked in. He said, I think I heard you grunt before you jumped off of the beam. But he was like, you were so focused and so locked in to accomplishing your goal. Don't, don't forget about the people that helped you get there. And he said, and he said, I made you hold on to the bar because you need to take time to smell the roses too while you're, while you're going after what you're going after. And 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 it, and and it and it made a lot of sense to me, and 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 I still reflect on that because when I looked around, Dylan, like the word that comes to me um, now is clarity. I always define it as clarity, and and when you have when you have clarity, like I, because I I remember I could see. I don't know what I think it must have been the five. I could see Highway Five from where I was at, and I could see that it was clogged. Mm. And but I could see that like it was I could see that it was clogged. But if if I was a car that was like starting from where I was starting, I would know not to take that route because it's clogged up mm -hmm. and it's it's jammed. And so, like as I reflect on that, I'm always just like I think about altitude is everything. Mm. Altitude is everything. And we all heard that saying, your attitude determines your altitude. Mm -hmm. And with the when, when when the attitude, when the attitude is right in life, it's gonna take you to the, it's gonna take you to another altitude. It's gonna take you higher and higher. Just the attitude alone, just attitude. Like it attitude, like it takes attitude to start a business. Yeah. It takes attitude to go get your MBA and not quit. It takes attitude and attitude determines everything. If your attitude is right, if you set that attitude when your feet hit the hit the ground in the morning, if the attitude is set right, then you're gonna your altitude has no choice but to climb. And when you climb, you're gonna have clarity. It's gonna give you clarity in life and being able to see certain things differently all because you set the attitude right and you're going to be able to see stuff and roadblocks that you can avoid and steer clear of all because attitude attitude was right so that was a learning experience that i had at leadership foundations that it was just like it blows my mind and i know that like i haven't even fully unpacked that like it's going to it's going to be a part of so many things down the road for me that one moment that I had at Leadership Foundation. That's an amazing story, Derek. I I love it. I'm gonna share this with the faculty. You know, it's like, and that's, you know, that's day three. <laughs> day three. Day three, I was like, oh. And we're, we're three weeks in front of commencement now. You know, we're on the other end of the rainbow. And, and, and you're still, I love how you're still, it's, it's still a nourishing meal, right? It's still providing you with reflection. You know, you were like, when do we ever get done growing as a human being? Never, right? Not if we're up to stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and this is a, you know, Margaret She, our other senior associate dean used to say, you know, this is a master's degree and you're going to master management and you're never going to get done, but, but you're going to, people are going to listen to you as that person has a master's of business administration. They've, they've, you know, and then, and then it's, it's doctors and lawyers practice medicine and law, right? You know, we, we, we practice working with people well for the rest of our life, you know, I mean, our career for sure, but, but it's even more than that. I love that. That's, that's yeah. a beautiful telling of, of a powerful moment. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and 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 I think you 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 said it well too. And I even learned from you right there. It's just like thinking about it, and you know, you're you're getting a master's in management, and the first person that you have to manage is yourself. Yeah. And and if you can get efficient with that, you know, I look at it and I say, yeah, it's it's 
it's going to present a lot of opportunity. But uh, the, the, the other photos, uh, you know, they, they just I just wanted to show, you know, how Anderson became family. And it's a shame that we weren't able to be on campus the last year, but I found ways to to really take advantage of the situation and, and, and what it was. And so, uh, you know, th you know, th these photos that just help show, you know, my family at Anderson, this, this right here, this is my, 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 my group one in, mm -hmm. in statistics and, and, and organizational behavior. This is my group right here. And, and I learned from, from all of them, like everybody in that photo, like they taught me things and, and, uh, you know, help let's, me let's, grow. Let's name check them. Tell us who, who was in your group. Yeah. Yeah. So we got Jing Lee right beside me that I got my arm around. And, and, you know, one thing I learned from Jing Lee, uh, you know, Jing Lee, Jing, Jing Lee checked me one time, uh, real, real smooth. Like, uh, and it was a, it was, it was good because I was coming from a different culture. I was coming from the locker room culture mm. and within a locker room, you know, we can give people, uh, you know, not nicknames, but like you can do a shorthand name of, of their own name or something like that. Like for me, I was always known as DC. I was always known as DC in the locker room. And uh, for Jing Lee, like I was calling him, I would just call him Jing, but that, was, that wasn't me disrespecting him. That was me showing affection towards him. And, and so I, like, it's, I would just call him Jing. And, uh, you know, he checked me on it. He was like, just call me Jing Lee. And, and, I, and I wasn't sour about it at all. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and I reflected on it and I was just like, you know, you're in a different culture. You're in a different, different atmosphere. Jing Lee didn't come from, Jing Lee didn't come from the football locker room. <laughs> you know, so, so you, you, you have to, uh, you have to monitor those situations uh, and it was a great experience for me early on because that way I just kind of knew, okay, I need to come to everybody, come, come at everybody from a professional standpoint off the bat. And if it grows and develops into something more then you know, fantastic. But that element of what I experienced in the locker room isn't necessarily, you know, what's needed in uh, the, the the business room, you know, or or, or 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 in business school, and so it was a great experience for me, um, and I'm thankful that he did that to me. Uh, and then right beside Jing Lee, we have Davisha, and 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 I and, and I'm, you know, Davisha is one of my favorites uh, because Davisha helped show. She helped show that like it's okay to. Fall, fall in love with your friends on campus. Like oh. it's, it's okay for you guys to be in a tight bond with one another. Like within our cohort class, th there was a cluster of girls that like, you could see they just had a, a bond towards each other, a great friendship, mutual respect, you know, uh, Jen Swift, she moved from Colorado and her and her and her and Davisha became roommates, and 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 you know, you know, uh, other others as well. Emily Sizemek, like she was a part of the crew with Davisha, and so you look at it, it's like, uh, wow, like you know, you get to see that, like, uh, yeah, these, 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 they're 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 one, like you know, it's okay to 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 like meet these new people and to grow into a a, a deep relationship with them. And, and all of them, you know, they'll be, they're going to be friends, like for, for, for here on out. And, mm -hmm. and that all started just from being in an NBA class together. And so she really opened up my eyes and, 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 and I like what she brings to, you know, a, a room and, and just to her friendships and to our class. And then uh, Eric, Eric, Eric right here, Eric Smith, he's, He's Navy. Eric is Navy. And, you know, one thing I tell you from Eric, I, I enjoy Eric because Eric had the Navy lingo. Like he had Navy lingo, you know, and, and, and uh, a vocab, a Navy vocab, you know, are you tracking with me on that? And, <laughs> you know, like just different things about it. Like, like you know, 
okay, you know, I, I, my, my compass is pointing this way. And this was like, oh, okay, you know, like a boy scout, you know, so. And, well, like your father too. I mean, your dad, I'm sure has got that phraseology, right? Exactly. Yes, exactly. And, and just being around him, like it, it was, he was being his authentic self and it enriched the experience though, because it was just like, ah, I see what they're doing with the NBA. Like I see what, what gets done when you bring these people from different backgrounds into one room, you know, because he has, he just, he has that language because of his experience mm -hmm. and, and the experiences that he had in the Navy, you know, and, and, and those experiences when he brings, when he brings that to the classroom, like he, that language that he's using, it, it ties into his experiences. And, and therefore it's like, okay, I'm picking up from him, you know, that it's like, okay, it's, it's fine to be yourself because what you, they, that's why they have you in the classroom to be yourself. And it's okay to use your language. Yes. You make adjustments. Like I had to make like with Jing Lee, but you, you, it's fine to use like who you are and, and what you know and, and, and from the experiences that you that you that you've had from the work that you've been involved in, and so uh, my group, yeah, I I I'll, I'll go to war with them any day. So real real happy to have that experience right out the gate. Group number one, and then right beside that is uh, this is at the FEMBA Olympics. <laughs> we had us a good time, and this is my class, and 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 we're celebrating. I think we came in third place. Uh, I may be. I may be giving us a better finish than we actually had, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we we had a fun time though. Uh, and you know, I was I was about to not go to it, but my classmates, you know, encouraged me to come out. You know, encouraged me to come out, and and that oh. was something that I'm 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 very happy that you know, hey, that, that they that they did that, and they were like, hey, you know, be there, like you know, and and it was a fun experience. Uh, we, 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 you know, we, we, we celebrated with one another, uh, shared laughs, you know, and just grew closer. Like we grew closer together. That was another experience that just brought us closer together as a class. And, 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 and you, you have to take advantage of those opportunities uh, pursuing your MBA. And then this last photo, it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites because I actually did a post of it on Instagram. And in that photo is actually who you interview, Maxine. Right. That's Maxine right there. And, uh, you know, Maxine is one of my favorites as well. Um, the, I, I said in the photo, you know, when you, if you surround yourself, whoever you surround yourself with, basically it's going to have that influence on you. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and essentially, you know, I, I was just expressing that, you know, being at Anderson is it, it's you know I was immersed into a place of people that are just impressive, and 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 it's like I shared with you earlier, Dylan. You know, at Anderson, people are like people people stand out, and mm -hmm. and I and and I, and I share with you the fact that like within sports. We, we, when somebody is extremely good, when somebody is, you know, dominant, you know, in sports, we'll call that person a dog. And, and, and I shared that with you, uh, like a good example is Kobe Bryant, you know, yeah. he's, he's relentless. Give him the ball in the fourth quarter. He's going to attack. He's not backing down. He's not quitting. He's going all four. And at Anderson, you are surrounded by dogs. You are surrounded by all different types of dogs from whatever industry they came from. Right. Whatever, whatever, whatever industry, whatever background they came from. Anderson, that's all they bring in. And when they when 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 the admissions is looking at the essays and reading and trying to figure out who you are, they are looking for individuals that have that dog in them that's going to come in. And not take no for an answer. They're going to be relentless, 
and 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 when you see them down the road, it's going to be like it's it's evident why they were at Anderson. It's going to be evident because of the body of work that they accomplish and achieve, and that's what ends up at Anderson. And when you are surrounded by those type of people, all it does is reinforce in you and reaffirm what's in you because that's what you know that's that that's 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 what's driven you and gotten you to the point where you are and 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 if you and if you understand that about yourself when you step into rooms you go in there with confidence not arrogance but just the confidence that okay like I'm here because Anderson sees that in me. That's all they let in. Everybody in the class, that's all I was around. And, and I'm happy to call those people that were surrounding me family. I feel like I can reach out to any of them and, and, and people reach out to me randomly and help me out and set me up for opportunities. And, 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 and that will move me on to the next slide if you are ready to move on, Dylan. No, 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 no. I can't let you go, man. Sorry, it's too much good stuff. So super quick, though, because, I mean, I know you got more. But, yeah, Maxine Hupe, right? I, I had the – she's one of the six summer spotlights, as are you. And, you know, she's a professional dancer, ballet and modern. And, you know, she was just talking about – I said, well, what do you think you bring to the party, you know, from your, from your training? Because when she was about 12, she started to be a seven-day-a-week training person. And she did that for a decade, danced through college, and then was a professional dancer for, you know, eight or 10 years before FEMBA. And she said, you know, dedication, discipline, and failure, right? That's what, that's what walks in the room with me. And, you know, she went through her list of injuries. You know, she said, you know, people don't realize ballet is a sport, but it's a sport. She said, I've broken my feet four times. I'll have permanent tendonitis in both ankles for the rest of my life. I've torn labrums in both hips. Mm-hmm. And she said, when we're on the training table. The person on the training table next to us is a professional football player. Like we're hurting our body in the name of our craft, the way, you know, those guys are. And I just, yeah. So, and and she referred to this picture. She didn't have it in her deck. She goes, I have a picture of Derek. So when I saw this picture, you know, I'm like, okay, this makes up for the fact that you left out the, uh, you left out the uh, Peyton Manning and the <laughs> Tom Brady interception <laughs> picture. Cause I love, cause you know, you know, football is ballet with car crashes. So, I mean, just, you know, I would have loved to have been a classmate with you. I would have loved to have been a classmate with Maxine. And I love your sharing about the moment, you know, the moment on the pole, like even a person who made his living listening to his body and asking his body to perform at the highest level in front of 80,000 people, hundred thousand people, even that person had the opportunity to be, to grow, right? Like you, your attitude determines your altitude. You know, it's like, I, I hear that you walked in here with this attitude of, you know, I'm not done learning, you know? And, and so that moment in leadership foundations and then a moment with Jing Lee, like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm very pro-American. I'm like, you know, okay, does America got problems? Fine. Okay, good. Well, let's work on those. But like, where else do you want to live? And when else do you want to live? We're living at this amazing moment in history. I don't want to trade places with my grandparents, you know, and I don't want to live in another place. Like America's got space for people, in my opinion, my experience. And for you to be able to let Jing Lee polish the diamond in that moment, right? Like, and, and to even frame it, like I come from a different culture. You know, I excelled at the highest level of my craft for seven years with five companies. And there's a way to be in a locker room. And to get a nickname in a locker room, that's like, that's not a bad thing, right? That's actually like, you kind of got to earn a nickname, right? You know, people didn't start throwing around DC because they thought you were second rate, right? Like, no, it's DC, right? DC's, Mm -hmm. DC just walked in the space, right? This is that guy. Remember that guy from William and Mary who was two-year captain and went around, went out in the third round, you know, and he just brings team in the door with him. So you were paying that forward to Jing and Jing said, you know, it's not Jing, it's Jing Lee. Mm -hmm. like all right you know and so letting you know diamonds polish diamonds is the metaphor that i love that 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 each of us has a spark like there's something divine in each of us and and it wants you know our job is to not hide our light under a bushel to use another proverb but to Mm -hmm. let our light shine because when we let our light shine it unconsciously lets those around us have their light shine and if we can put 65 incredible learners in front of an incredible teacher, 
everybody wins and it's a bright space. It's a, it's a learning environment. And you have to bring an attitude of, I still have more to learn. Like if you walk in here and you know it already, why are you here? Like, don't be that guy, you know, don't be the, I know this already person. Like that would be an attitude to leave outside the MBA, but, but beginner's mind, humble, curious, open. What's next life. I'm here for an adventure. And, you know, and I got, I got the love bug and I got Jing Lee and I got Navy lingo and we're, we're, you know, and this is my, this is my new family. And I'm going to relate to them. Like each one of them is my teacher, you know, and I have something to teach also like it's reciprocity. It's the flow. So um, I don't know, pictures worth a thousand words. That's 4,000 great words. I mean, those are four beautiful pictures. So all right, you can go forward now, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not sermonize a little bit. I'm a preacher's kid, for goodness sake. Yeah, no, you do a great job of packaging it all together and, and making it cohesive. So uh, that's a skill, Dylan, that I'll definitely acknowledge because, uh, yeah, you said it. You said it very well. Okay, so life after the NBA. Now, it is. so what I wanted to achieve was kind of give you the vision uh, of what's going on for me as a sports agent, athlete, marketer. And so the two pictures I have, okay, these guys, I didn't get to represent them, but it's, it's this is what I have my mind set on. You know, uh, right here on this photo, we have Haloti Nada. Uh, defensive lineman for the Baltimore Ravens for a long time. He finished with Detroit, but won the Super Bowl with the Ravens. And I have a photo with him, and I and I and I and and, and I, I I wanted to capture that on this slide just to say, okay, that's somebody that I want to represent, like a, a quality, a player of that caliber. That's what I'm gunning for as an agent. And then we take it over here, and we have a photo with me and Reggie Bush and another Super Bowl champion that played for the New Orleans Saints and the Detroit Lions, as a matter of fact. And so uh, both of these guys are guys that I look at and I say, yes, when they're in college and they're looking for an agent to represent them, these are the guys that I want to gun for. And I feel confident that I can do this which also leads me to an experience that I got to have working for a sports agency in the fall this past year. And so I shared about this back in February with you, Dylan, when it was September, I think it was, it might've been, yeah, it was, it was September. Uh, one, of, one, of, one, of, one of my classmates, Ted Lee, Ted Lee, one of my classmates. I want to give Ted Lee a shout out because Ted Lee has taught me how to network and he helped me network. He was, he was, he was sitting in a sports business association Zoom call with head agent Audie Attar of Paradigm Sports. And I wasn't in the meeting. Because I'm not even I'm not even a part of the sports business association, and there's a story for that as well. But we'll deal with that later. So <laughs> Ted Lee, he's like he just hits me up out of the blue. And look, mind you, it's not as if Ted and I have grabbed lunch on the regular, or even have talked on the phone consistently. No, Ted Lee and I are just in the same class. We're, we're in the same class. We were a part of group five. The, we were the hybrid group, class, FIMBA class of 2021. And, but Ted Lee, Ted Lee knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. He knew what I wanted to get into. And so Ted just hits me up randomly on WhatsApp. He was like, he was like, man, he was like, uh, are you on this Zoom call? And I was like, huh, what Zoom call? And he was like, uh, we're, you know, the, the SBA, we're interviewing 
Audi Attar. He's a head agent for Paradigm Sports. They mentioned to having an internship. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he was like, he was like, I'm gonna record, I'm recording, I'm recording the video and I'm gonna send it to you. I'll send it to your Google Drive. You watch it. And I said, okay, cool. So I sit down and watch it, take my notes. And he's, he hits me up a little later on. I think you need to apply for that internship. He was like, you need to hit it. He was like, you need to hit him up on LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm like, all right, what do you, I was like, what do you think I need to say? And, and, and he was like, well, he was like, go, go directly for the agent. Don't even, cause the agent had mentioned, you know, one of his, he mentioned his legal, uh, someone from his legal department to, it, you know, di- reach out to them if you want to get an internship. And Ted Lee was like, no, reach out directly to Audie, reach out directly to the agent. And so I was like, okay, man, I'm, I'm going to do it. And so I, I put up, put together a letter and I, and I think I look, I let Ted look at it. I said, you know, what, what, you know, he was like, yeah, that's, he was like, yeah, you need to send it off. Like, and, 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 you know, just like sell it, sell it who you are. And so I, I, I follow Ted's uh, ins- directions, instructions, whatever you want to call them. I follow them to a T. And, uh, you know, I, get, I hear back from, from Audie, who, who, who connects me with Jordan, who, who's, the, the, who's a part of the legal team for Paradigm Sports. She's one of the attorneys, Jordan Lee. And, and, and then they, next thing you know, I'm interviewing for an internship back in September. And, and then... Oh, before you know it, I get the internship. All because, and 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 I didn't have anything on my radar, like in terms of in terms of internships. I didn't have anything on my radar. Like, and I and I and I really, I really was kind of like low-key. Like I I I wasn't I wasn't like networking as good as I could. And and Ted Lee was the one that first got me the internship because he sent it to me and was like, you need to apply. And then he taught me how to network just off of, he would, he would just send me, he would send me invites to connect with somebody on LinkedIn. So he would just, he would just do a, he would like, he would do a, 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 um, a group message to me and somebody else ran just random and give them my bio and be like, uh, you know, Derek, I want to introduce you to, you know, this person that does X, Y, and Z. You guys should find time to connect. And I was, and, and this is like during COVID where we're all just kind of like trying to figure it out. And he lit a match under me that like just helped me understand that like, that's how I take advantage of this time that I'm in. And so I give Ted Lee, you know, big props. And, and, and he, 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 he will always, he will always have a, a seat at whatever table I'm at. He will always have a seat at the table. Wherever I'm at, I'll get up and give him my seat if, if needed. And so I had this internship. I finished it up in December. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm rolling with it. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm rolling with, with the opportunities. And, and Derek, if I could just, just so people know, so Paradigm Sports, like Conor McGregor, right? Like just, uh, just for people who don't know sports yeah. media, you know, put, put, put Paradigm Sports in perspective a little bit. This is not just a guy in a diner. This is no. the real deal. No, this this is a real deal agency, and 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 what they're creating is is what you you know what what I'm aspiring to create because their head agent Audie Attar, who's also a UCLA graduate, Audie did his MBA as well, and um, and, and so he didn't he didn't take a law he didn't take a law route like 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 a lot of agents do. He took a business route. And, and I harp on that because I want to impress upon you this new deal that he just did with his main client, Conor McGregor. So they they used to represent football, basketball, basketball. Uh, now they kind of tapered off from those two, but they still do MMA. So they do UFC fighters, uh, mixed martial art fighters. And soccer, so those are their main uh, list of clients within those sports. And so, Conor McGregor, I think we all we may have, maybe maybe not, but proper twelve whiskey. That's something that they came up with with Conor McGregor. And so they came up with this in 2017. Uh, and this is business. This is business at the finest. Mm-hmm. And and so, 
you know, they, they, they counters their client. And so what they do is they say, Hey, he's, he's this, you know, polarizing UFC fighter. You either, you know, you like him or you don't put it that <laughs> way. You either like him or you don't. And he's Irish. And in this Irish whiskey space, it's not crowded. There's not, a, there's not a lot going on. There's opportunity. And so they come up with an Irish whiskey. They create an Irish whiskey. They, so what they do is they, you know, Paradigm Sports, they have to find, you know, who, they have to find out who's, uh, you know, who's, who can produce the product and who can distribute the product. You know, but Conor McGregor, because, you know, Conor doesn't know how to do any of that, but Conor knows how to market. <laughs> Conor, knows, Conor knows how to sell and create buzz, which is what he did, which is what he did after he fought Floyd Mayweather in 2017. He came on stage with a bottle of proper 12 whiskey and a glass, and he poured himself some, 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 some whiskey, and he's sipping it as he's doing his interview. And boom, launched the product right then and there. And here we are, 2021. I just saw on front office sports that he sold his shares of the company. I think they said he had 51, 51% of the company. So he sold his 51% of the company to uh, a, a liquor, a liquor, a liquor brand for six hundred million dollars, and so it's like, oh, now I, you know, obviously he comes out off, you know, very well from the deal. His his agency because they they were you know a, a part of this as well, you know, with him on the deal, you know. So boom, you see, like, oh, you know, that's what you can do with athletes. That's what you can achieve with athletes, and. That's the agency that I got to work for and experience, you know, be, be behind the scenes on, on things like that and see what, what can be done with the athlete. And so those, you know, the, those aspects of the business of sports, that's, that's where I want to go at with it. And that's why I say, I look at the athlete as a business. And that's why I have CAA on this slide as well. You know, I have CAA up there because, they're, they're, they're an agency that that's what they do. Like they, they, talent is not the end game. Working with talent is not the end game. It's bigger than that. You know, we, they can work with brands, you know, they can work on the side of leagues, working with leagues and, 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 and helping leagues get better deals, helping, helping individual teams build, build their stadiums. Like they, they, they partnered uh, with Chase to help build the Warriors new facility that they have up in uh, the Bay Area. And so what CAA does, that's that's something where I say, oh, you know, that's 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 another form of business that, you know, I want to to to, to get into with the athlete and, and, and the representation. And so that leads me to, you know, my final comment. Just about, and this is another way of just bragging on UCLA and the people that want to help and to share success. So one of my classmates, I'm in a class right now, uh, sports, special topics in sports, the agony and ecstasy of sports management and entertainment, winning both on and off the field. That's the whole name of the class. That's, that's the whole name of the class. And it's with Peter Goober, who is the owner of the Golden State Warriors. He's also the LA Dodgers. He's also Team Liquid. He's also uh, Mandalay Sports. So, so much that Peter Goober does. Uh, you know, he, he created the movie. He was, or he would help produce the movie. Uh, what was it? Purple. Purple rain. Oh, excuse me. The color purple, not purple rain. The color purple. And Batman, that first Batman with uh, Michael Keaton. He did that. And so it just gives you an idea of his resume, uh, what he's capable of. But in this class, though, I'm taking it 
with another student, Vivian. Vivian Wang. And uh, Vivian, I, we, I set up a call with Vivian off of just LinkedIn uh, because she's in the class. She works for AEG. They're in the sport and entertainment business on the side of, you know, venues. And I have a call with Vivian, you know, um, and I and I let her know, you know, what I'm getting into, you know, just just networking with, with other students from the class because we, we're virtual. And this is what I learned from Ted Lee. So, you know, I'm taking the, something that I learned from him and I'm putting it into play. So I'm talking to Vivian and I share with her, okay, this is what I'm getting into. And I, I want to become a sports agent. And she's like, oh, really? She was like, well, I'm doing the introduction for Howie Newchow, who is the head of sports at CAA. I'm doing an introduction for him for our class um, later this quarter in June. She was like, you should do it. You should do it and not me. Uh, what? Because, because of what you want to get into. And 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 I'm 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 more than happy to let you do it. Like uh, you know, because this is a totally an opportunity for you. And so I'm like, well, I'm like, you sure? And she's like, yes. And so she's like, I got I have a call set up with CAA. I have a call set up with CAA. Um you know, and this was last week. I have a call set up with CAA and I want you to be on the call. I want you to be on the call because I'm 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 trying to uncover more information about uh how we knew child so I can do a good job with introducing them. And she was like, and I've already taken notes and stuff. I'll send you over my notes. I'll send you over the notes that I've already put together uh for the, to introduce him. And but be on this call. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, great. Like, let's do it. And so we jump on the call together, like days later, uh, we jump on this call with CAA and they have their chief of staff on the call and they have, um, you know, one of the associates on the call and, 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 you know, she lets them know what I'm trying to do. She's like, you know, this is what he's trying to get into. He, yeah. he, 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 he played professional football. He wants to get into player representation. And so I thought it'd be good for him to be on this call. And, you know, they, they're, they're like, you know, okay, well, let us know more. So I get to talk to him. And I have a call today with CAA, uh, with, with the associate from CAA to find out more. And so that's just my little tidbit on the shared success at Anderson. Because, you know, there's an opportunity today. There's going to be an opportunity today and then there's going to be an opportunity later, you know, with the presentation. And so uh, if all that works out, you know, I'm looking at, hey, like this could be a potential foot in the door with a powerful company, CAA, which would be great to learn from. Now, I want to I want to get out and do my own thing. But this agency right here, they also, you know, may be good partners just for me to say, hey, OK, I'm still doing my own thing. But as I'm building my own thing, OK, I get to learn from a powerful company like CAA that when it comes to, uh, and that stands for Creative Artist Agency, Creative Artist Agency. And I want to say, uh, you know, out of the, out of the sports, out of the sports agencies in terms of revenue earned, uh, they they were number one. 2019, maybe even 2020 was different, but in 2019, it was they were number one in revenue generated. And it was the number one uh, revenue generator for CAA. It took over, you know, television and entertainment. And so their sports division is doing extremely well. And they do things on that side of, you know, branding, branding with athletes and pairing with athletes. And so they have a lot that they can offer for a young aspiring agent. Uh, to learn and grow and, and 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 experience the business, so that's that's why I placed that on the slide because you know this experience at Anderson it just continues to give. It keeps on giving. It keeps on giving, and I'm I'm excited to see you know after after this is done in June, you know where where will things lead? 
Oops. And and how and, 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 and you know just and marvel that just the the way that when they say like your family here at Anderson and you can these people are are a part of your life, you know, as you continue to move forward, it's is is for me it's just proven true. So with that said, I'm excited about this life at the NBA as I pursue after my career as a sports agent, athlete, marketer. Opportunities with the company like CAA would be tremendous to help me learn and grow more about the business. And UCLA Anderson has been everything that I've wanted out of the, out of an NBA. I'm, I feel better as as a manager. I, I know that I'm continuing to grow as a manager. I continue to learn as a manager. It's opened up doors for me. I sit on boards. I've been I've been asked to be on boards because of that level of name recognition behind Anderson. I've 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 got a I've got acquired by three boards just because of me going to UCLA Anderson. And it's only going to continue to open up doors. So with that said, thank you, Anderson. And thank you, Dylan, for believing in me. Oh. Oh, I Derek, and I didn't I didn't acknowledge your appreciation of me slide back. I sort of stepped over that. And you are welcome, my friend. Uh you're welcome, right? You're you're a you're a human being that is fun to be a yes to, right? You bring a lot of life in the room with you. And um you know, you, you're, right? Apples don't fall too far from trees, right? Your mom and dad worked hard and they, they, built, um, they built a young person of character who uh, is aware of others and observes people around him. And, you know, look what shows up, you know. Um, you know, I, we, you keep talking about being in the business, being in the business, you know, not the legal side, but being in the business and the brand. And, you know, each of us is a, like we, we have a, a reputation and it takes years to build and you can mess it up and, you know, really quickly. Um, but I, I just thinking about business, I was thinking about that phrase we say in the South, like, oh, they're up in my business. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, Ted Lee got up in your business and mm -hmm. Vivian's getting in your business and, and they're your classmates, but they're also like more than that. They're, they're like your rep or your, agent or your talent scout, you know, they're saying, Hey, take this role, mm. you know, Hey, Hey, you know, like, and if you, if you bring that reciprocity in the door with you share success, however you want to frame it, you know, play, play in the sandbox, let everybody be a resource. You know, I, I have something to offer them and they have something to offer me. I just think your story is so showing that. And um, it's just beautiful. Like that's, I think I see why your friends or, you know, your classmates said, oh, Derek should tell his story because your story, it's it's not just, hey, look at Derek, isolated hero on the hill all by himself. It's no, it's like, look at Derek and look what happens around Derek. Mm -hmm. And and this is, you know, this is the kind of culture we want to build. It's yeah, I love it. I get it. I get it. And I love this deep dive, I, you know, getting to hear the full, the full or the fuller version of the story now. Okay. We can go to the next slide. And I don't know, is I just, I, I don't know where it fits, but you know, it's like Richie Chang. <laughs> he's yeah. like our, he's our Kevin Bacon, man, six degrees of separation. I don't know. Maybe you're, you're going to talk about him later, but if not, I'm just going to, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask about Richie because he, he weaves in with the Ted story also a little bit, right? Like Ted got it started, but Richie had yeah. been talking like. Yes. Uh, and, and, and I don't have Richie pictured up here, but Richie has been my sounding board. You know, it's almost as if whenever I have a conversation with Richie and, and, and he's one of my brothers in Christ. Whenever I have a conversation with Richie, it's almost as if, you know, it, it, it gets her, it, 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 the next thing you know, what we talked about is coming up around the corner to happen. You know, Richie was telling me like, 
this is what you need to do. Like you need to get, he was like, athletes are going to say, yes, you played the game. But what do you know about being an agent? You haven't had that experience. You need to have that experience in order to add comfort and, tr and, and, and to gain the trust of the player that you can do a good job for him in, in representation. And so Richie was the one telling me about that. He was like, I had that conversation with Richie and you know, he shared that with me and he was like, you know, uh, you have to figure out a way to do that. Mm. And, 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 and after we had that conversation, that's when Ted, I don't know, he, maybe he said something to Ted Lee, I don't know. But after he said, after he said that, shortly after that, that's when that opportunity presented itself. And so, you know, Richie actually prompted me to jump on that deal because of the conversation I had with him and, and, and his ability to help me think through things and process things. And whenever I have ideas about business, like I, I take them to Richie, you know, he's a, he's a, He's a rocket. He's a rocket scientist. Yeah. He's a rocket scientist. So it's like, hey, whenever I have some questions, you know, Richie, Richie is Richie is the one that that I, I tend to go to and, and get his help. And so just another example of the network at Anderson. And, and like I mentioned, those those I call them I call them dogs, those dogs that you surround yourself with when you get surrounded by those those individuals with the success that they have, the experience that they have, the knowledge that they have, it, it, it helps you make good decisions, well-informed decisions, because good decisions are made with the wealth of counsel. And he's one of my first in counsel when I, when I need to make a decision. I love it. I just, you know, just quick underlines you know, Ted Lee was was in the Sports Business Association for his own edification. He's listening to a presentation. Oh, my God, Derek needs to hear this. Goes out of his way, records it, puts it on Google Drive, makes you listen to it, and then gets all up under you to, like, you know, reach out, be direct. You know, here's let me help you with the cover letter. Sell yourself. Vivian is offering her seat at the table to you. I got mm -hmm. verklempt when you said that a minute ago. I didn't want to step over that. Like, what a generous thing. Like, like what kind of trust does she have in the universe? It's like, hey, this is pretty cool for me, but this would really be cool for Derek. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share this. I mean, what an acknowledgement of, of who you are that someone would want to give that to you. And what of an acknowledgement of her confidence in the universe that, you know, if I pay it forward, it'll all work out. And then Richie, Mr. Networker, Mr. Connector, you know, but but not just shaking hands, you know, like really getting a sense of of what you're about. Mm -hmm. And 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 as a as a good aerospace engineer, right? Like aerospace engineers are they're trained to send the satellite or send the airplane up and bring the airplane down, right? It's not just enough to have a vision. Let's let's flesh that out. Like, okay, you got half the story. You know, you have credibility walking in the door, been there, done that on the sports side. Now you're going to balance that out with the credibility. You know, you need to go get your get your repetitions in mm. on the on the business side and let and, and, and then as you stepped into that internship, you know, like I love your living entrepreneurship that I've been watching the last six months. We've been talking, you know, more in depth, like you're getting your voice like, yeah, there are a lot of lawyers in this game. But, you know, contracts are the start of it, right? If I'm going to bring a business point of view, we're going to think about the brand and we're going to think about the brand extension and we're going to see who's doing that right. And I'm going to see how I could bring that to a young athlete and say, look, you know, you've got this finite window. You want to maximize that. But this window is going to set you up and those you love for the next decades. So let's play that game to win. You know, that's the way a business leader thinks, right? That's not a one-time contract. That's an ongoing relationship. And, you know, wow. I just love listening to your story, Derek. I do, it's, it's exciting. You, you, yeah. have, you have done this thing. 
your way, but you've done it in, it, it's a we story. It's not a me story is how it occurs for me. And I just would want everyone to underline that for, for people following in your footsteps, like, wow, look at how he participated in the village and in the community and in the sharing success culture and, and then took it further. Yeah, you do a great job of, 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 of weaving it all together and having it make sense and be coherent. So uh, thank you for helping me even articulate my own story and, and having this platform to do so because you know, I remember listening to Ed Moses when, when I was coming in and, uh, and, and, you know, it was, it was, it gave me, it gave me that encouragement and you, and you encouraged me to listen to that. <laughs> it, was, it gave me just that encouragement that like, yes, like, you know, professional athletes, like we can do this. Like it's, it's, it, it is something that's in our wheelhouse. So step out and, and, and go after it because you have something to offer and, Thank you for giving me that confidence, that 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 reassurance, and and I'm motivated by it, and and, and definitely inspired as we move forward. Well, you are welcome, and and just to for the reference, Ed Moses is a FEMBA graduate. I think he's class of '16. He is literally the very first person I ever interviewed, and he's a he's a multiple, you know, gold, silver medal Olympic athlete, and uh, that young man is a dog. And uh, yeah, I'm doing my first interview ever with somebody who's probably been interviewed 300 times. And I just love that guy. I mean, that dude is a stick of confidence. He's just, and I'm oh, yeah. like stumbling and nervous. And he's just, come on, we, we, we got, <laughs> he ran the interview. Uh, so next time I ever start something new, I'm not going to start with somebody. I want to start with somebody a little, help me ease into it a little bit. But yeah. uh, that, we didn't release it first, but that was the first one I recorded. Uh, okay. We, re we released Katie Kruger Davis, our, our student body president that year. She was the she was episode number one of Drive Time, but but Ed was the first interview I had. So I'm, I'm glad his story was helpful for you because I know your story is going to help be helpful for a lot more people. So this is great. Thank you. All right. All right what's yeah. next? Where are we going? Well, that's it. I kind of left it to go Bruins and, 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 and ready to, for the next phase, whatever you have for me. All right. Well, um, Oh my gosh, we're gonna have we're gonna have like sub stories out of your main story. Um, you've got oh my gosh, um, some people are gonna listen to the whole long format, but we're also gonna like some of these 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 moments yeah. that you've captured. Um, I can't wait, uh, Samantha and our editing and you you gave us our our work and um, but we're gonna we're gonna bring it to the to the end here with with what I call the lightning round. So uh, these you know you can you can go long on the answers if you want to, but these are kind of a little bit shorter, except for the first one's probably long. So, um, so we'll, we'll wrap up with this. So first question, you know, where you are now a month away from graduation, reinvent yourself, entrepreneur, you know, gone from one unique career, professional athletics to another unique career, being a, a sports agent, athlete marketer. So you're still in the deal. Story's not complete, but how do you when you look in the mirror, when Derek looks at Derek and says, okay, I just, I just trusted UCLA with a hundred grand plus, and, you know, two and a half, three years of, of a lot of intensive output while I'm still a dad, you know, raising my son through COVID. Um, how do you gauge the ROI of your investment in you at this moment? I look at ROI and I say, that was determined before I even, before I signed up. And I think if you if you're trying to wait and see what what's going to happen down the road, uh, I think you I think I think you missed it. I think you missed what was really going on. ROI, like I, I the return was when I when I decided yes, like I'm I'm going to Anderson. When I said yes, I'm I'm I am I, I see that as the as the graduate school the program that I need to be a part of. So. For me, ROI came. ROI came when 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 Chris Thompson called me and said, "You got in." ROI, ROI, right there because it was just like, "Oh, I I, I already know how this is going to pay off for me because I'm in Southern California. I intend on being in Southern California. I'm getting a, a master's from UCLA." 
and that name brand down here in Southern California, oh, no question. ROI is immediate. So I don't need to look and see what dollars are coming in down the road. Look, that'll take care of itself. That stuff will take care of itself. And I don't even need to calculate that. Like the investment that was made, the time, the energy put into this, it's already been taken care of. So hands down, ROI, it's in the bag. And I, I knew that when I signed up for the program. I love that answer. Never got that before. All right. That's a beautiful way to say it. I love that. You know, and that's circle that back to, you know, our attitude determines our altitude and with altitude comes perspective and I can see those roadblocks and I can go around them. So for those, those people listening to Derek, if I could just underline it again, like nobody knows who you are. Grad school is like a total chance to reinvent yourself. You know, don't limit yourself to your own experience so far like give yourself permission to just be a bigger better expression of yourself like let this you know and let this journey of growth and development happen to you for you with you and to those around you i just I, yeah like if you walk in the door like yeah the, my roi is already positive my return on investment is already positive from day one like that's a whole other attitude to walk in the door with. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, right, Derek, what? Okay, you guys, class of 2021, crazy, COVID, the whole deal. You know, what are you most proud of about your very unique class of 2021? I would say, and it goes back to uh, Devisha Patel where, you know, Devisha and, 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 and those group of, of women you know, coming together, uh, I, I think that that's really the the greatest example of of our class and, and how it felt to come in on weekends and on the hybrid schedule and and take classes and, and, and to just feel like yeah, this this is this is the this is this is my family unit and and. And we hug and, and and find out how everything is going and, and meet up afterwards and you know uh, meet up and and in, in, in the cities that we live in you know at, um, in between weeks and we have a connection and so when I look at our class the class of 2021 I think that there's just a a real connection across the class and 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 that love that. That, that, that was that, that's been shown you know from my class uh, by by the members uniting together and and just saying that it's okay to meet new people and mm -hmm. at this age you know because a lot of times it's like oh, I have my friends yeah you know, I went to college already but it's okay to meet new people at this age and and give yourself permission to form deep relationships with them. Oh, <laughs> okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, you know, we're, uh, the vaccines are working. People are taking off their masks. June 15, California comes back awake or comes back to life. What are you looking forward to most post COVID? Oh, getting rid of the mask. Yeah. Just getting, getting, getting rid of the mask. No more mask. I don't have to wear the mask anymore. You know, so I'm looking forward to getting rid of that. Uh, you know, I think that going, you know, going on the other side of COVID, I'm looking forward to, yeah, more, because I like to eat too. So, <laughs> you know, going out and, and, and being being at a dinner and, and, and like, like tonight, for instance, I have a dinner tonight, uh, you know, with the men's group that I attend on, on Wednesdays and like, it's just something about, you know, a meal and, and, and just fellowshipping with others and just relaxing. Like for me, I can deal with anything. You give me food, Dylan, I can deal with it. I can deal with anybody, anything. I can deal with anything. I can tolerate anything. Just give me a plate of food and I'll sit there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh, so, yeah. I love it. I love it. And, um, you know, we've also learned a lot. I think we've reinvented life, in my opinion. What do you want to keep from COVID? What's something that actually you learned to do newly during COVID that you want to keep doing? You know, it's this right here, Dylan, like what we're doing. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I heard something in, in one of our classes. So in Peter Goober's class, uh, we had the, who was he? He's the uh, VP of business, um, uh, of, of business operations for the uh, Golden State Warriors. His name mm. is Brandon Schneider. And he, he, he dropped a nugget and you had to catch it. Cause a lot of people, you just hear some stuff and you miss it. But he dropped a nugget where he was like, Peter Goober, his boss told him, hey, meet, you need to meet 12 new people per month and, and make that a routine. And it sounds like when he said that, it sounds like he still does that. Even where he's sitting at in his role now, he still does that where he tries to meet 12 new people per month. But he dropped that nugget. And what we're doing right now, that's something what I, that I want to keep up after this COVID uh, period is over with because I've been doing it in terms of, you know, and, and Ted Lee assisted in this as well, just in terms of networking. But I've been doing doing this. And, and, and for me, I'm like, hey, this is something that I want to continue to do is people are comfortable using Zoom and doing these virtual chats. And, 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 and I can stack up calls, uh, you know, easily on Zoom versus doing coffee with somebody in person is good. But I think that I can scale quicker with Zoom capability. So that's something that I'm going to keep post COVID. Well, that might be a little bit related. My next one, what's a, what's a favorite productivity hack? Personal, professional, doesn't matter. What's something like that, that I, I geek out on this stuff. I love it. You know, like what's something that's really kind of, for me, yeah, this is a hack, this whole thing, you know, cause you're, you're in San Diego, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, like nobody drove 120 miles for us to get to have this conversation. This is a heck of a hack, but what's, what's something in, you know, big or small that's been helping you lately that you don't mind sharing. <laughs> you know, for me, just being an athlete, uh, a productivity hack. And I look at it in a sense that what keeps me in a routine and I had to stick with my, my, like a similar schedule to what I was accustomed to from playing sports. Mm -hmm. And for me, the productivity hack is an early morning workout. Get up, <laughs> get up and go to the gym when it first opens and get the workout in. Cause that stacks that for me, that's a win. That's, that's, I mean, and before that, like I would say making the bed, that's, that's, that's like hack number one because I, I see them as wins and I stack each one of them as a win. When I get up and I make up my bed, that's win number one. When mm -hmm. I go drink some water, I drink, I drink 20, 20, 20, 20 plus ounces of water. That's a win. Hey, brush the teeth. That's a win. Get out the door on time. That's another win. Get to the gym and get that workout. That's a win. So by the time I'm done, it's like I had five wins on the chart. And so I see the productivity. A lot of times we're productive and we don't even know it because we don't give ourselves credit for the little things that we've done. So for me, it's always been productive to just say, man, you got to see all of these things as wins. And when you accumulate these wins, you start looking at your day and you're like, man, look how much I'm, look how much I'm winning. I'm winning. And when, I, when I'm telling myself I'm winning, I know I'm a winner. And so as a winner, I'm like, I'm going to continue to win. I'm going to just continue to win and I'm going to stay productive because I'm like, man, I'm knocking that off. I'm knocking that off. And, 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 and you, have to, you have to stack all of these little things because everybody doesn't break up in the morning and brush their teeth. And they have the power to. And people that they don't brush their teeth, they wake up and they might throw a mouthwash and just head out the door. And we know that's, I mean, that might, they might see that as a productivity hack. But I look at that and I'm like, nah, we need to, we need to dial that in because, you know, dental hygiene is important. So that's how I look at things. Stack the win, stack the win, stack. I cook food. I ate good today. I ate healthy today. My meals were healthy today. Those are wins. And that's motivating for me. 
because I look at all my days and I'm like, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing things that are productive. And so that's a productivity hack for me. I love it. Um, and this is a pay it forward. You know, if you could offer some words of wisdom to this year's entering classes, class 24, but you know, for future classes, what, what would you say to people walking in, in the door behind you coming into Anderson, if you could help them get a great start? If I could help them get a great start at Anderson. Hmm. You know, something that I look at and I say, I, and I think, I think of a lot of us, we, we end up doing this and, and saying that we, you know, we wish we had done it better. You know, I think that really, like when, when you tell us, Dylan, like, hey, go to the happy hours, go to those things. Like when you tell us to do that, really buy in to doing that. Like, cause, because I think the film was the greatest program. I think it's better than the full-time program. I, and, and you know this, I don't, I'm preaching to the choir when I say this, but for various reasons, but one reason that I think this is the greatest is because you get, you get three years to use that brand name of UCLA Anderson. And additionally, three years to form relationships with people here on campus. And so with that said, it's really, really dive in. Cause this time is going to fly. It's going to fly by, it flies by so fast. And, and like, yes, you got to take care of your work. Like, you know, and, and that, that kind of held me back at times because it was just like, man, I, I, I like this work, I have to get it done, but be, be intentional about, hey, dialing it in and saying, I'm going to these events, these extracurricular activities and, 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 and you know, these little pop-up events, get into more of those because you get, you get to the end and it's like, man, I just wish I could, I wish I could just hug. I wish I could just hug it all. And I can't, it's, 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 it's leaving. I can't hug it. I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I, it's gone. And so take full advantage of it. Hug it tightly when you get into Anderson and you get to have this experience because you're around special people. This experience, hands down, this, this phase of my life is exactly what, what I've needed and it's, it's helped shape and mold me and, 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 and I'm continuing to grow from it. So uh, that'd be my advice. Thank you. That was very well said. Um, so your class manager, Terry Zabo, is about to retire June 30th after, after a wonderful career at UCLA. Um, so we're all going to be wishing her well. Any, any words you could wish to Terry as she approaches retirement? Yeah, Terry, Terry is one of my favorites. And, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I was always, I, you know, I, I saw her as somebody that she would always be a connection for me back to the university. And no matter at what point, you know, I would be able to come back and go up to her office because I would do that on my breaks. I would go up to her office and I would go in there and just chill and eat my lunch. I would actually eat my lunch up there <laughs> with Terry sometimes. And so I saw her as somebody that I would always be able to go back, like no matter, you know, how far removed I, I you know, I, I, I become from the university, you know, she would be there, but I'm so I'm sad to see that she's going to be leaving, you know, and, but, but she's done a tremendous job. I, I felt like she, she, she I, you know, she knew everybody's name within our cohort. Like, I mean, within not even just my cohort, just like the class. Like, I felt like I had an individual. I don't know if it was just me or if that's how everybody felt, but like, I felt, I, 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 I really feel like the way she treated me as if, you know, I was special was the same way that she treated everybody else. And if you called her, if you sent her an email, she knew exactly who you were, what you were, what you were, what you were focusing on and how she could help you. And she gave me tremendous help throughout this process and made it, you know, a streamlined process, especially from that side of, you know, different administrative things and, and being able to put myself in position to have success at Anderson. So, you know, Terry, I'm going to miss you. Please come back. <laughs> I, I don't know how to, you know, if you, Terry, if you have social media, maybe LinkedIn, I can, I can probably find you on LinkedIn. 
we'll, we'll have to stay connected if we already aren't. So I will miss you, Terry. Thank you for all that you have done for us FEMBA students. And I wish you the best as you head towards retirement. Congratulations. Thank you, Derek. All right, just a couple more. This one, these two are kind of silly, but they're fun. Harry Potter, any character, male, female, human, other, uh, any character, Harry Potter, who would you be and why? Uh, who was that kid? There was there was a there was one. He was a stud. He was a stud in the sports. Um, and I don't remember his name, but when I watched the when I watched the show. If I'm probably anybody, yeah, I'm I'm kind of, you know, I was a fan of Hagrid. I think, you know, you know, I wouldn't be Hagrid. I I, I couldn't I could, I didn't necessarily like the way he lived, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I definitely liked the fact that he was he was reliable in a sense that like he was that source of uh, protection for Harry. You know, somebody that Harry could rely on and Harry would go to for protection. So. Hagrid was is somebody that I look at and I'm like, okay, I admire what he did on the on the show on uh, for the series. I love it. All right, nobody said Hagrid yet. I, that's awesome. I love it. And uh, you were hybrid, right? Section five, your year um, has a different number of other years, but um, you were in the hybrid section. So of the four houses, Gryffindor and Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff and Slytherin, what what do you think your what what was the space of your section which house were you guys we definitely weren't slithering uh we didn't have any snakes you know in the in the crowd i uh i would say yeah i put us at hufflepuff like what, what wasn't that kid wasn't that harry's uh wasn't that his crew no he was, was they he, were was uh, gryffindor? yeah he was gryffindor he was gryffindor yeah give us give us gryffindor yeah give us give us gryffindor uh you know, we, 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 we have to be the winning team. I think we, 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 we have the best cohorts. All right. There it is. All right. There it is. All right. So last three, it's the, it's three versions of the same, same question. So these are my little mascots, got my little bears up here. So this is our, we're, this is the, you get to give a Bruin bear hug. I'm going to ask for three. The first one is a Bruin bear hug acknowledgement to a faculty member. Who's a faculty member you'd like to send a, a bear hug to? Uh, Gregory Pollock. Gregory Pollock, he does brand management. He teaches brand management at, at UCLA Anderson. And uh, I give him a hug because yeah, his class, it was, it was one of the classes where it opened up my eyes and it, and it, 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 it made the experience of brand management, the classroom all fit together in an integrated sense, just from the way that he directed the class and, and would just put you in a role and you had to play that role and, 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 and come up with ideas. And it fit who I am, you know, just in terms of just having that creative element to myself. And I'm, cause I'm not really this heavy quant guy that's gonna be crunching the numbers, but when it comes to being able to uh, collaborate with others and, and, to, and to have a team and to come with ideas to solve a problem, that's me. And his brand management class, that's what it was able to do and show me from an academic standpoint, but from a professional standpoint as well. All right, Professor Pollock. All right, that's kind words. All right, second bear hug is uh, to a friend. You know, it could be in Anderson, it could be outside, but who who would you send a bear hug to? Oh, definitely to my, my guy, Richie Chang. Like I'm sending Richie the hug all day. Uh, you know, when, when I'm in LA, if I'm up in LA or something like that, yeah, you know, I, I'll go track down Richie. He was way over in Thousand Oaks. So it's like, oh, uh, you know, that's an additional hour trip. But uh, if I'm up in the area, he's my guy that I'm tracking down. Thank you. All right, last question. And this has been a heck of an interview, Derek. Um, uh, bear hug you would send to any family member, who would you choose? Always, always, always Travis Cox, my brother who is three years older than I am uh, because I'm, I'm partially getting the NBA because he went and got his. So for me, you know, I think God knew that, son, you don't know what to do, but I'm going to put somebody in front of you that does know what to do. And if you just follow his lead, uh, 
you're going to end up in a good place. So that's all I've done is follow my big brother. And because of that, now I'm sitting here today having this interview with you, Dylan, and, and enjoying the company of the great people at UCLA. Awesome. Thank you, Travis, for the impact you had on Derek. We appreciate that. All right. <laughs> anything you want to say to anybody about anything? Last words are yours, and we'll, we'll bring this to a completion. If I'm saying my last words, it would be, hmm. It's much like I shared with you, you know, uh, when I gave you the, the reference to football and how we call each other dogs. Like if, if somebody is of that caliber and that would be my last word, just to people thinking about coming to Anderson or having that opportunity to be at Anderson. When you're in the classroom, know, know that you belong there and know what you know that know that you're there because of what Anderson knows you can that you're going to do. You might not have to accomplish all that you're going to accomplish right now, but Anderson, they know who you're going to be and what you're going to become. And they can see that in you. And because they can see that in you, that's why they have you sitting in the classroom. And it's going to express itself if you just stay the course and you stay consistent with it. Don't lose courage. Don't lose faith. Trust the process and you will end up somewhere that you are proud of and others are proud of as well. Wow. All right. <laughs> Drop the microphone. <laughs> well, um, oh no, you disappeared. Go back. Oh, sorry. All right. Well, thank you, uh, everybody. Thanks for listening. Um, we're gonna have fun editing this. There is so much. This is this is like a seven course meal. If you listen to the whole thing in the long format, um, I appreciate you uh, trusting us to give us a couple hours of your time. And uh, Derek had a lot of good things to say, and his peers wanted you to hear them. If uh, if you only hear bits and pieces of this, that's great too. People are busy, but Derek, uh, I appreciate you. Uh, this was one long take, and. Uh, yeah, you're an athlete. Just get through this thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I really appreciated uh, getting to to interview you with with Jermaine and Jairo three or four months ago. And um, and this has been a treat, as I said at the outset, to, to, to hear the long version of your your family and your and your education and your professional football career and your incredible FEMBA experience these last three years, including riding the wave of covid and, um, you know, you're an entrepreneur and you're going to you're going to make a difference for people and you're going to go out there and you're going to make us proud. You're going to help. You're going to help athletes be more than athletes, really set themselves up for long term success. And I can't wait to follow your journey. And thank you so much for your generous sharing of your story today, Derek. Thank you, Dylan. It's been a pleasure. And I'm excited to see how this all turns out. Uh, but go Bruins. Go Bruins. All right. Thank you all for listening. We'll have another great story soon. <laughs>